Well, welcome back to my Commodore 64 Games Memories video series. This is where I look at old games and some of the technical details behind them. Today we have a very early demo by Commodore called Season's Greetings from 1983. Music by Wayne Eastwood. Screens or sprites by H. Rex Boucher, I think. And design and programming by Stephen Murray. I hope I've got all those names correct. Now this code has lots of very old memories for me. I think I must have been about 10 years old when I first saw this demo. I think it might have come on tape or something like that. I don't didn't have the disc version at the time. So yes, if you like these kind of technical deep dive videos, then please do consider liking or subscribing to this channel or sending me a super thanks. They are all always very much appreciated. So here we are, I'm just going to speed up the loading a little bit in the emulator debugger so that we don't have to wait quite so long. This is a standard D64 disk image. Uh, it seems to be using kernel load routines, so there's nothing special about drive code or anything else in this. There's a little boot program, which is basic. It loads uh, music machine code and then the final basic controller program, if I remember correctly. Here we are, press any key to start. Let's look in the Vic debugging view here, the full screen uh, debugging view, which shows us when sprites are appearing on the screen with little red bounding boxes. Let's move all of these windows out of the way. Let's start the demo. So this demo actually takes you through a little bit of a journey. It's quite atmospheric. I seem to remember it uses the standard uh, character graphics screen. It, it doesn't define any extra characters, but it does define some extra sprites. We can see the sprites here with the red bounding boxes. So the corners of the screen, instead of using characters, they get lifted up with sprites which appear behind the character set. The same as the snow on the Commodore logo. So the snow effect just is, is sprites rising up behind the Commodore logo. We get, into the, we get into this lovely screen here now where we've got a nice snow effect, which is pretty good, really, for standard character set definitions. It uses quite standard waveforms, I think, for the music, but at the time I think it's, it's pretty good music for the time back in the day that when this was actually developed. This next screen is uh, quite interesting. So, this Christmas tree actually seems to have a whole bunch of expanded sprites with uh, the animated sprite frames there with the twinkles. Um, these expand, well, these sprites are expanded in the X and the Y direction, which helps to cover the Christmas tree. And because they're, I think, high resolution sprites, it provides quite a good amount of uh, decent resolution coverage on the screen. This candle effect is also quite interesting. We can see there that it's actually made up of two separate high resolution sprites, um, not expanded in the X, but expanded in the Y direction. That's what gives the, the flame a, a long, tall, thin aspect. And because it's using two high resolution sprites overlaid on top of each other, then we get what looks like a nice high resolution animated flame. This next screen also, well, it has a nice dissolve from one screen to the next, but we have this snow effect. And of course, we've got just sprites flying over the front of the graphics with, I'm guessing it's probably Rudolph and also Father Christmas, Santa Claus, depending on what you want to call them, flying around. And of course, I think the sprites, when they flip over, they get uh, expanded in the X and the Y. Uh, we have a rather nice piece of music here uh, with this rather nice colourful uh, Petsky screen, right? There isn't too much going on apart from you can see that there's actually quite a lot of code executing and this code seems to be uh, executing quite a lot of uh, the basic ROM code. Uh, the basic ROM looks like it's mapped in and it's, it looks like it's executing code there from basic 
And that's not going to be a surprise. This next screen, of course, we can again see where the sprites are expanded. Actually, we've got some multicolored sprites there for the people dancing around in the foreground and then in the background with the animated snow snowman with, with, with his hat. Of course, the hat is interesting is that the actual hat moving left and right, although it looks the same, it's actually animated moving left or right in the different sprite definitions as opposed to just having one sprite definition and moving it left or right with a position, which is an unusual way of doing it, but okay. Maybe the hat was going to have some different animation, but in the end it just didn't and it just moved left and right instead of, say for example, tilting or something like that. And only $595. Well, I think that kind of is, is a nice, useful little time capsule there of how much uh, the Commodore 64 would have cost. Uh, when I saw that, I don't think I remember seeing the only $595 screen. Uh, I think I saw the, the PAL version as opposed to, I think this is, must be the NTSC version, perhaps, because dollars wouldn't make much sense uh, way back in the day in the UK. Let's look at this now in uh, Vice 64, or oh, sorry, ICU and Vice uh, 64 instead of the C64 debug GUI application. Just setting up my ICU 64 screens here with the memory view. I think we'll open uh, a nice graphics sprite view and we'll also open a graphics uh, text screen view as well. I've got a separate tools video which goes through these tools that I use when I'm debugging these applications or games and I'll add a link to the uh, tools video in the video description below. So here we are, we can see what looks like a basic program. Let's press uh, run, stop and restore and then list. There we go. We can see that that's the loader code. Uh, there's some REM statements at the beginning and of course there's the demo credits and then it seems to change so well it seems to set the screen and the border color and clear the screen do some standard prints prompts for some information and then we seem to be doing some prints and then fitting this or well, the keyboard buffer i think with some uh returns or something like that so i think when we have a look in the debug text screen view now there we go it's doing a load christmas music a load christmas code and then it's doing a, a Christmas uh, route, which is another basic program, and then just running it. If we scan through the memory in the graphics debug map view there for the sprites, we can see that there are only sprites in the first pick bank. Uh, we can see all of the different flame animations. We can see all the different snowman animations, the, the dancing people, um, the reindeer, Santa and his sleigh, and the Commodore logo. The Commodore logo, because it's high resolution, is actually built up into chunks. I think there are 13 flame animations for each part of the flame. You know, if I was making that flame animation, I would have made the internal flame have a different number of looping frames compared to the external part of the flame. And then that would have given more apparent, uh, kind of like semi-dynamic um, animation frames for the flame. But that's, you know, just my personal preference because they would have been animating out of sync with each other. It would have just given uh, more variation in the animation. We can see in the memory debug view there just how much memory is being updated and it's about a kilobyte for the, uh, for the snow effect falling down. The, the snow being built up on the Commodore logo is just the same high resolution sprites, but with just different colors, I think. It doesn't have to be, actually. It could be different sprite definitions. Oh, yeah, it's different sprite definitions. Of course, looking at it in the debug view there, um, the snow is a different shape to the actual Commodore logo. That's fine. Uh, so if I press run stop now, so I couldn't press run stop as the Commodore logo was being displayed. I think that that's probably all machine code. But we've got those sys statements there, line 540, 550, 560, 590, and there's a whole bunch of other sys statements as well. Those sys statements, the basic sys command, of course, uh, calls machine code that's already been loaded into memory or poked into memory. So the basic controller code for this Commodore demo seems to have several different parts. Let's sys38912. Oh, there we go. We get a transition to that screen. Uh, let's have a look at some other sys 
statement values to see what we can do. So after calling some of the machine code routines with these different sys statements, it seems to set variables and then go subs to eight line 800, which looks like it does some stuff. Uh, there's some for loops. Looks like it goes subs to 850 and 850 also seems to be doing other stuff as well. So it's doing some other statements. It seems to be waiting for, uh, yeah, it seems to be waiting for kind of like a pattern or waiting for an, uh, waiting for uh, something to be updated in memory. There we go. And then it returns. So we seem to have portions of this demo that can have run stop pressed and portions of the demo that don't. So we seem to have the ability to kind of like run the music poll or run the music processing uh, from basic code, which is um, an intriguing way of uh, piecing together this menu. I think, you know, if I was writing this demo, I would have probably just made it all machine code. But if you're prototyping various different screens and if different people are pro providing different screens, then just stitching it all together and controlling it from basic is certainly one way of doing it. So we can see that the, the sprite was not cleared. Uh, so we're able to uh, see the sprite now, the sprites should appear and then there we go. So at the start of the demo, the, the sprites from the previous attempt to run that part um, appeared, right? So we can certainly, and there we go, we can list the basic program while the sprites for the Commodore logo with snow over the top of it or rather the snow is behind it. Uh, we can list the basic program on top of that. Oh, there we go, that's that screen. And of course, 52832, yeah, there we go. So the tree, obviously the characters in the background. And then if we scroll the screen, there we go, uh, we get the expanded sprites left over the top for the uh, sprite particle effects or the twinkly light effects or whatever they are. The twinkly sparkly balls and lights. Uh, did you have a Christmas tree this year? Uh, we did, even though outside it never gets colder really than 28 degrees Celsius, um, even at night time. So all of these have nice little transition effects with the screens. So each of these screens, uh, well, most of them anyway, seems to have uh, quite nice music for its you know time period. Uh, there's a little REM statement here saying that the price at 9680 hex. Oh, well, there we go. If I look in the memory in the machine code monitor there, there's the text, only $595. And that's at memory at, at hex 9680. Huh. Well, there we go. So if you were, uh, say, for example, I guess, uh, in a shop and you wanted to apply a discount, uh, you could change that in memory, I suppose, and then run the demo. Looking through the, the memory in the debug graphics map text screen view there, I can see, well, those look like the screens and maybe that's character and color data. Maybe that's, maybe that's the ordering of the data in memory. But some of the memory, it looks kind of like ordered and or structured. This memory here, for example, looks ordered or structured. Um, and it kind of reminds me of music data, right? So this demo does have quite a lot of music relatively speaking. And as the music plays, I can see it read quite large amounts of data sequentially through memory there. There's another chunk of memory as, as the music's playing, right? So that's, that, that was at, what was it, 5.2 or 5.3.0.0 in hex. And then the, I think it was the earlier screen, right, that was reading large chunks of sequential memory from uh, quite early on in memory. That's the uh, the dissolve effect between the two screens. That's that's what that memory access pattern was. But this seems to be, is that the machine code music player routine there highlighted in blue in memory? I've got an idea. Let's see if we can copy memory from uh, where was one piece of music being played from? It was uh, five three zero zero in hex, right, or something like that. And then the early screen reads data. Read, seems to read sequential data from E00 in hex, right? I have an idea. Let's, uh, what is it? Transfer, copy, right? Move, yes, T, T command. Let's move uh, a whole chunk of data, roughly 257 bytes, to 
from 5200 to E00. Then let's see what happens. Or rather, let's hear what happens, not see what happens. So just getting past this screen. And. Yeah, so it started playing a different piece of music there in the middle, and then it goes back to the regular piece of music. So it got interrupted. Hmm. So that seems to be music data. Let's copy a larger chunk. Let's copy a good few pages, each page being 256 bytes, give or take. Then let's run, yeah, not run, run, let's run the demo. Again, let's warp past this screen. Listen now. There we go. So yeah, we're able to relocate music data from one area of memory into the other one and get the get the same music player routine to play the different piece of music. So yeah, that's that's kind of like mildly interesting, I suppose. So uh, the music data format as it sits in memory uh, doesn't seem to have uh, too much uh, position dependent information. There aren't any memory addresses or anything else in there that would uh, really um, mess up the music data. It just seems to be a large amount of sequential music data. It might be uh, music data from one of the uh, popular or contemporary music editing packages of the time. Um, or it might be some uh, bespoke music data format. Who knows? Um, it might be interesting to find out if there was a music editor at the time that could load this data uh, back in again. Um, but that would be quite time consuming to find out, I think. So anyway, thank you uh, very much for watching these uh, technical deep dive sessions into old Corridor 64 games and sometimes demos. Uh, this demo really does bring back a lot of old memories from my very early childhood when I first started looking at Commodore 64 stuff. So thank you very much for watching. I would like to also thank all of the supporters to my channel. You are the red nose to Rudolph the Reindeer. So thank you very much for watching. Take care. Have a good evening or night, and I hope you got lots of presents over Christmas time, wherever you are.